curious George, a curious little monkey. Here he comes, as happy as can be. Curious George, a curious little monkey. Why is he curious? Well, let's go and see. Curious George goes to a ranch. It's a beautiful day, George, said the man with the yellow hat. How about driving up to Mr. Adams' ranch? He's a good friend of mine, and maybe you can learn to ride a horse. It sounded like a good idea, and soon George and his friend were on their way. When they came to the ranch, they stopped at Mr. Adams' house. George, I have to arrange your riding lessons. You can look around, but remember, don't get yourself into trouble. The man with the yellow hat went into the house, and George went over to the corral to look at the horses. He saw a girl with a black and white horse. The girl's name was Betsy, and she was crying. My daddy wants to sell old Bucky because he's so hard to ride. He bucks up and down too much. You better keep out of his way. So George went over to the other side of the corral where some cowboys were lassoing steers. The steers were very noisy. George watched. After a while, the dinner bell rang, and the cowboys put down their lassoes and went to get washed. How did those lassoes work? George was curious. He jumped up onto the fence and tried to throw a lasso. It caught in a tree. He tried another lasso. It caught on the handle of a water pump. George tried again. And this time, he lassoed the gate latch. George pulled the lasso tight, and the latch moved, and the gate swung open. Uh-oh, what had he done? All the steers came running out. The cowboys heard the commotion and ran after them. Who let them out, one of them shouted. It's that monkey, another one yelled. He did it. George decided it was time to get away. He ran to another corral where some other cowboys were sitting on a fence. George couldn't see what was going on. He was curious. So he jumped as high as he could. Too high and too far. He landed right on the back of a black and white horse. It was Betsy's old Bucky. The horse began to buck. George went flying into the air. It was fun. He turned three somersaults and landed back on the saddle. The cowboys all cheered. The man with the yellow hat and Mr. Adams heard the cheering and came out of the house. Betsy came over too. Old Bucky bucked again. He threw George higher. This time, George turned four somersaults, one turn, and two twists. And then he came down in the saddle again. Now old Bucky gave up. He knew there was someone who could ride him. Yahoo! The cowboys cheered and threw their hats into the air. The man with the yellow hat and Mr. Adams cheered too. Then a cowboy who had been chasing the steers rushed into the corral. That's him, he shouted, pointing at George. He let the steers out. But he didn't mean to, said Betsy. Besides, he rode old Bucky. Daddy, can I keep him now? You sure can, dear, said Mr. Adams. And then he turned to George. You're okay, partner, he said. I'm going to give you a lasso to take home. Come back when you're real good with it, and we'll let you help rope the steers. You'd better let me hold on to that lasso, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Enough is enough. And off they went in their little blue car. George goes to the library. <laughs> 
George, said the man with the yellow hat, I have to take some books back to the library. Why don't you come with me? They got into their little blue car and drove to the library. I'm going to the front desk, George, said the man. You can look around, but don't get into trouble. George went in, walked down the hall, and peeked into one of the rooms. Boys and girls were looking at picture books. Miss Adams, the librarian, was at her desk stamping piles of books with a rubber stamp. Miss Adams, called a library helper, you're wanted on the phone. I'll be back in a minute, children, said Miss Adams. Read your books and please be quiet. What was that thing on the desk? George was curious. He jumped up, picked up the stamp, and tried to do just what Miss Adams had done. He stamped and stamped and stamped. Look, there's George, said a girl. Hey, shouted one of the children. Let's play follow the leader, and George will be the leader. George kept stamping. The children ran over to the desk and started to stamp books. That's fun, shouted a boy. They all cheered and made a lot of noise. Then George jumped down and leaped onto a big globe of the world. It started to spin. First slowly, then faster and faster. The children clapped and cheered again. George was giving them a good show. But all of a sudden, George lost his balance and grabbed the ring of the walnut. Down came the map and down came George, just as Miss Adams appeared in the doorway. Oh no, she cried, what's going on here? Stop this right away. Then she saw George. How did you get in here? I'm going to get the head librarian. George was scared. Don't worry, George, said a boy. We won't let you get into trouble. We'll help you tidy up, said a girl. The children hung up the map. George helped. He put the stamps back and straightened out the books. Look what George has found, said one of the children. It was a book about monkeys. Let's see it. George put the book on the floor and opened it. All the children gathered round him. Look, a boy cried. There's George in that book. As George turned each page, one of the children read the story of a monkey that had lived in the jungle. It was George's story. The children sat and listened. Just then, Miss Adams ran into the room, followed by the head of the library and the man with the yellow hat. Why, Miss Adams, said the head of the library, no one has ever kept the children so quiet. How did you do it? Well, said Miss Adams, George did make a lot of noise, but now he made up for it. Choose another book to take home, George, said the man with the yellow hat. We've already read that one plenty of times. George chose a book, and Miss Adams checked it out. Next time you visit us, she whispered, leave the stamping to me. All the children waved goodbye as George and his friend got in their little blue car and drove back home. George rings the bell. The church bell didn't ring yet, George, said the man with the yellow hat, but it must be time soon. You go ahead and I'll meet you there. On his way to church, George met Mickey and Sandra dressed up in their Sunday best. There was a football on the grass across the street. George ran over and threw the ball to Mickey. Nice going, George, 
said Mickey. And they ran over to play with George. We'd better be careful, Sandra said. It's muddy over here. Just when she said that, George kicked the ball right into a patch of mud. Oh, no, she cried. What will Mother say? Mickey grabbed the ball and kicked it back to George. But George missed it and fell into a puddle. What a mess! Just then, Mrs. Wicker, the Sunday school teacher, came running over. As George was shaking off the mud, it splashed all over her new dress. George, she cried, look what you've done. George was scared. He ran to the side of the church, climbed all the way up the bell tower, jumped inside, and hid behind a bell. Just then, the minister and the janitor came up. Why aren't the bells ringing? asked the minister. I keep pressing the button, but the power must be off, said the janitor. Can't you ring them by hand? asked the minister. The ropes are too high for me, said the janitor. Well, you'd better get them ringing soon, said the minister, or no one will come to church. And he left. Oh dear, said the janitor. How can I make them work? But George knew what to do. He jumped down from his hiding place and landed on a rope. Then he jumped from one rope to another. Up and down. Up and down. The bells are ringing, cried the minister, and ran up the stairs again. A monkey is ringing them, shouted the janitor. Why, it's George, said the minister. Keep ringing, George, keep ringing. George kept ringing. All the people heard them. Now they knew it was time to go to church. George could see the man with the yellow hat and all the neighbors walking to church. Mickey and Sandra and the other children waved to George. See you in church, they shouted. But as soon as George came down, Mrs. Wicker, the Sunday school teacher, grabbed him. You are not going to get away again, she shouted. I'll tell the minister about you. Just a moment, Mrs. Wicker, said the minister. George should not have messed up your dress, but he did make up for it by ringing our church bells. Finally, the service began. We are lucky to have our friend George with us today, began the minister. Without him, there would not have been a service. Curious George visits a barber. said the man with the yellow hat. Looks like I need a haircut. Let's go to the barber shop. George and his friend got into their little blue car and drove on. The man in the yellow hat let George off in front of the barber shop. You go in and I'll park the car, said the man. But please don't get into trouble. Inside the barber shop, a man with a black beard was ready to pay his bill, but he couldn't find his wallet. He was very worried. Has anyone seen my wallet, he asked. Everybody started to look for it. Look under the chair, said the owner. It must be somewhere. But nobody could find it anywhere. Finally, the barbers went back to work. George was watching what was going on. One customer was getting a haircut. Another one, a shave. Still another one was all covered with hot towels. George sat in one of the barbershop chairs and kept turning it around. A barber was drying his customer's hair with a funny looking thing. How did that work? George was curious. When the barber went to answer the phone, George quickly picked up the strange thing and pushed a button. Swoosh! It blew hot air all over the place. 
he pointed the thing at the customer who had his hair cut. All his hair stood up. Then George turned around and pointed the thing at the man who was getting a shave. What a mess. Stop that monkey, shouted the angry barber. Catch him, catch him, yelled the owner. He's ruining my business. George was scared. There was an open door in the back of the shop. George ran in and dived into a large pile of towels. This was the place where the barbers threw their towels when they finished with a customer. By now, the barber shop was full of confusion. I think he went in there, shouted a barber, pointing to the back room. You're right, let's get him, yelled someone else. Then the shop owner himself ran into the back room. Okay, George, I've got you now, he said. All the other barbers and customers came running to see what was going on. Everybody was angry. There was no way out for George. Suddenly, the man with the black beard bent down and picked up something in the big pile of towels. Look at this, he shouted. I found my wallet. It must have gotten tangled up in the used towels after I had finished your haircut, said a barber. The owner started to smile. Well, George, he said, you sure caused a big mess, but you helped solve a large problem. <laughs> right, said the man with the black beard. I may never have found my wallet without George. Just then, the man with the yellow hat came over. You were lucky this time, George, he said. Then he turned to the owner. And now, can I have my hair cut? Right away, sir. You're next. said Mr. Hernandez, I have something very special to show you. It was a little blue fish with a green tail. This is the most beautiful fish I have ever had, said Mr. Hernandez. I put it in this plastic bag while I fix a tank for it. George came over to take a look. Round and round the fish swam, wriggling its green tail. I'm going to help Mr. Hernandez fix up the tank in the back room, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Don't get into trouble while I'm gone. George walked around to look at the other animals. They were all in cages on different shelves. He saw a bright yellow parrot, a small gray cat with blue eyes, and a white French poodle. Then he heard a bird sing. It was the prettiest song George had ever heard. Where was it coming from? George was curious. All George could see was a small brown bird in a little cage near the ceiling. It wasn't very pretty. Could that be the one? George started to climb up the shelves to get to the top. He put his foot against the first cage. The French poodle was in sight. It barked. Then George moved onto the cage with the cat inside. It hissed. Then he reached for the cage with the parrot inside. It screeched. They were all making such a noise that George could hardly hear the little brown bird. Suddenly, the door from the back room flew open. Out came Mr. Hernandez. George, come down from there right now, he shouted. You frightened all the animals. I'm very angry with you. Mr. Hernandez went from cage to cage, calming the animals down. Soon, all was quiet. The only sound you could hear was the pretty sound of the little brown bird. No more climbing, George, said Mr. Hernandez. You've caused enough trouble. Poor George. Things looked bad. The bird was still singing. But then, George heard another sound. It was coming from the plastic bag with the fish in it. One of the shells that had a sharp edge had made a little hole in it. Soon there wouldn't be any water left for the fish to swim in. But George knew what to do. He picked up the plastic bag and very carefully slid the poor little fish into the tank. 
Slowly, it began to flap its tail back and forth again. Just then, Mr. Hernandez and the man with the yellow hat came back into the room. Look, said Mr. Hernandez. I wasn't too careful with that plastic bag. George saved my special fish just in time. As a reward, he may choose the prettiest pet in the shop. But George didn't want the prettiest looking pet in the shop. He wanted the pet with the prettiest song. George and his friend got in their little blue car, thanked Mr. Hernandez for the bird, and drove home. Curious George, a curious little monkey. Here he comes, he's always on the go. Curious George, the curious little monkey. Where's he going? We'd all like to know. Curious George, paints a billboard. I have to go to Mr. Chu's office today, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Why don't you come along? So they got into their little blue car and went off. Mr. Chu and I will be busy for quite a while, George, said the man. You can go outside, but don't get into trouble. George looked around. There was a billboard down the street. Two men were up on a scaffold painting it white. George walked over to get a closer look. Just then, the boss called up to the painters. That's right, boys. Cover it all with white, then paint a circus scene on it. Sure enough, said a painter. See you later, Mr. B. Soon the billboard was painted white. Time for lunch, said one of the painters and they walked away. George looked at the billboard. The paint and brushes were on the scaffold. Could he paint on that billboard? George was curious. He climbed on the scaffold, picked up a brush, and dipped it in paint. First, George tried to paint a monkey. Then he painted a lion. Then a tiger. Then a palm tree with coconuts. And then George painted his friend, the man with the yellow hat. When the two men came back from lunch, George was too busy to notice them. What's that monkey doing? One of the men yelled. He messed up the billboard, shouted the other. Let's catch him. George was scared. It was time to get away. He ran up the ladder, leaped onto a light, and hid behind the billboard. Now he was safe. When the boss came back, he saw the billboard. What are you doing, he asked. That's not the sign I asked for. We didn't do it, said one of the painters. A little monkey did it. A monkey, said the boss. I don't see a monkey. He climbed up the ladder and jumped over the billboard, said the painter. Mr. B wasn't listening. He kept staring at the billboard. A monkey did this, he said. I like it. It's great. Find me that monkey, said Mr. B. It's the best billboard we ever had. George peeked over the billboard. What was going on? George was curious. There he is, shouted one of the painters. Nice work, George, said the boss. I really like it. Just then, the man with the yellow hat came back. He looked at the billboard and smiled. Looks like you've been busy, George, he said. Here are two tickets for the circus tonight, said the boss. I hope you can come, George. And so they did. George, the curious little monkey, here he comes, he's always on the go. Curious George, the curious little monkey, here he comes, he's always on the go. 
George at the bakery. George was late for breakfast. You ought to have a good time at school today, George. Your class is going to the bakery. Now you'll find out where that toast came from. George grabbed his books and off he went to catch the school bus. Soon George and his classmates were on their way to the bakery. Welcome, said a big man in a white coat. I am the foreman. I make sure that everything in the factory is running smoothly. Just follow me and don't get lost. All the machines were humming and buzzing. Mmm, the bread smelled fresh and sweet. They came to a room where there was a machine that cut the fresh loaves into slices. Do you see the clock on the wall, asked the foreman. When the big hand and the little hand come together at the top, it will be noontime. Then all the machines will stop automatically and all the people who work here will go and have lunch. While the children were listening to the foreman, George wandered off. There was a door slightly open. Inside, a baker in a white t-shirt was making pretzels. He took some dough from a pan, rolled it into a long strip, and then folded the strip back and forth into a pretzel. After the pretzel was made, it passed under a salting machine. The baker pushed a long red lever, and down came the salt. George was curious. While the baker was putting a tray of pretzels in the oven, he leaped up on the table, took some dough, and rolled it into a strip. Then he tried to fold it with all four hands. Now George was all wrapped up in the dough. He tried to fight his way out, but instead fell right on top of the big red lever. George had started the salting machine. Salt poured all over the pretzels and onto the floor. So much salt that it spread through the door right into the hall. The foreman ran into the room. There is salt all over the fresh bread, he shouted. Who started the salting machine? The baker came running and pulled back the red lever to stop the salt. It was time for George to get away. He saw a big basket full of bread right near the factory clock. What a nice place to hide in. Let's get on with the tour, the foreman said to the children. Watch your step, the man said. From here, you can see the machine working. Just then, one of the boys on the tour reached into his pocket to get his handkerchief. Something fell out. It was his pen knife. It bounced off the edge of the metal floor and landed on a fresh loaf of bread that was moving toward the slicing machine. Oh, my, cried the foreman. If that knife gets caught in the slicer, the machine might break. There's no one near the machine to stop it. George heard the commotion and came out of hiding. How could he stop the slicing machine? He looked up at the factory clock. The little hand was up, but the big hand was still far away. How good that George was a monkey. He leaped over to the clock, held on to the little hand, and with his foot grabbed the big hand. Then, very quickly, he pulled the two hands together. And all the machines in the factory stopped. Hooray, shouted the foreman. The loaf of bread with the penknife on it had stopped right in front of the slicing machine. George, said the foreman, what a clever monkey you are. You saved the slicing machine and your classmate's knife. For that, you deserve a good lunch. In the lunchroom, they all had sandwiches made out of the freshly baked bread. The foreman gave George a whole bag of warm pretzels with lots of salt on them. Then, George and his classmates went back home. to George, the curious little monkey. He must know what everything's about. Curious George, the curious little monkey. What's he up to? Let's find out. Curious George, and the new neighbors. Good morning, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Have you seen our new neighbors? Last night, while you were sleeping, the moving van came with all the furniture. You can go and visit them and help them unpack, but don't get into trouble. <laughs> 
George got up and looked out the window. What a surprise! On the lawn of the house across the street, there were lots of tables, lamps, and chairs. There was even a parrot in his cage. George ran over to the new neighbors. Hi, said the girl in the blue dress. My name is Susan. This is my baby brother. I'm looking after him. Susan, called her mother. We're going to be busy inside the house. Watch your brother until we're finished. George was looking at the crates and boxes on the lawn. He was curious. Would you like to see what's inside? Asked Susan. She opened a long, narrow box. There was a shiny bicycle with a basket in front. The basket had a lid that opened and closed. George helped Susan lift the bicycle out of the box. My daddy gave me the bike when we moved, Susan said. You can ride it if you like. George climbed on the bike. He rode it up and down the lawn. Then he leaned back in his seat and rode it on just one wheel. That's great, Susan shouted and clapped her hands. George was the best bike rider she had ever seen. George started to ride the bike backwards. Watch out, shouted Susan. You're going to hit the moving van. The basket flew off the bike and so did George right onto the front lawn. George, cried Susan, are you all right? Luckily, George had fallen on the grass. He was not hurt. Susan's mother had heard the noise and came running over to see what happened. Nobody was looking after the baby who was watching the parrot. He reached for the door of the parrot's cage, opened it, and tried to grab the bird. The bird was frightened. It flew out of its cage and landed in a pine tree. Look what's happened, cried Susan. The parrot has escaped. And she began to cry. How are we ever going to get him back? But George knew what to do. He jumped up from the lawn. First, he grabbed the basket. Then he went over to the empty birdcage, took out some of the bird seed, and put it in the basket. Slowly, he climbed up the pine tree. Very slowly. If the bird got frightened, he might fly away and never come back. Everybody on the ground was watching. Now George was very close. He opened the top of the basket and moved even closer to the bird. When the parrot saw the bird seed, he jumped right in. Mmm, he was hungry. While the parrot ate the bird seed, George closed the top of the basket. Hooray! It was safe and sound inside. George handed the basket over to Susan's mother. Thank you very much, George, she said. You are one of the best neighbors we have ever had. You can ride my bike anytime, Susan said. New neighbors, new friends. George was lucky today. jump and play. Curious George, the curious little monkey. Let's go see what he's doing today. Curious George and the Mini Marathon. George, said the man with the yellow hat, today Mr. Lefkowitz's son is running in a mini marathon. Let's go over to his house before the race begins. They got in their little blue car and drove to Mr. Lefkowitz's house. George, said the man, why don't you go with Morris to the starting line and we'll meet you there later. George and Morris went down the street to the town square. In the square, a band was playing, banners were flying, and lots of boys and girls were getting ready to run. Don't tell me Morris is running this race, said Bobby. Well, I'm sure going to try, said Morris. 
There's only one winner in this race, said Bobby, and that's me. We'll see, said Janie. Then the mayor's voice came over the loudspeaker. Runners, he said, follow the road until you come to a fork. There you will find a red arrow. Be sure to follow it. Good luck to all of you. Now, on your marks, get set. They were off. George was watching. Lots of people were watching, too. When George couldn't see the runners anymore, he climbed up a telephone pole. George swung from pole to pole. Soon, he had caught up with the runners and passed them all. When he came to the fork in the road, he stopped to wait for Morris. Below him was the red arrow nailed to the pole. A little later, Bobby came running by. He saw the arrow, turned it up, then ran on. Soon, Janie and some other runners had reached the pole. They all had to stop. Oh no, said Janie, the arrow is turned up. Which way do we go? I don't know, said another runner. But George knew. He turned the arrow back to where it had been. Thanks a lot, George, called Janie, and they all ran off. Only Morris was trailing behind. I'm too tired, he said. But George pulled Morris up to his feet. Meanwhile, Bobby had passed the finish line way ahead of the others. Janie was next. After all the runners had come in, the mayor went over to Bobby. Well, he said, you won. Congratulations. And you won second prize, he said to Janie. Thank you, she said. But we had some trouble. The red arrow was turned up. If it wasn't for George, we would never have finished. Wait a minute, said the mayor. Who could have done that? It must have been you. You're disqualified. He took the cup from Bobby and gave it to Janie. Everybody cheered. The next prize, said the mayor, is for last place. And the last runner is just coming in. Sure enough, there was George, and there was Morris, right behind him. Well, said the mayor, I guess this prize is for Morris. Thank you, sir, said Morris. But if George hadn't helped me, I never would have made it. Well, said the mayor, in that case, we'll have to find a special prize for George. And he gave him a tiny cup. Hooray for George, shouted Jane. And hooray for Morris said the man with the yellow hat. He and Mr. Lefkowitz had been watching the race. Then the man picked up George, waved goodbye, and drove back home. <coughs> Curious George and the runaway elephant. It's a beautiful day, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Let's go for a drive in the country. They got in their little blue car and drove off. On the way, they saw the fairgrounds where the circus was getting ready for a show. There's John, the owner of the circus, said the man. Let's stop and say hello. John looked worried. One of our elephants has run away, he said. We've been looking everywhere. George and I are taking a ride into the country. We'll keep an eye open for him, said the man. And they drove off. They stopped at a field full of haystacks. George, said the man, you may play here. I'll go and get some coffee, and I'll bring you back an ice cream cone. It was a perfect day to play in the haystacks. George ran from stack to stack. Finally, he hopped on the biggest haystack of all. Suddenly, something moved under him. First, there was a little bump, then a bigger one. And then, George felt himself being carried away. He was riding on the back of an elephant. George held onto the elephant's ears as they started towards town. Soon, they were in the middle of Main Street, 
Cars stopped to look. What's that? Shouted a driver. Somebody get them out of the way, yelled a woman. There was a big traffic jam. A police car screamed down the street. Elephants aren't allowed on Main Street, shouted one of the policemen. George was scared. It was time to get away. He tugged on the elephant's ear. At the end of the street was an old warehouse. The door was open and they ran in. George climbed down and closed the door. Now they were both safe. Or were they? The police car came down the street. They've got to be here, said one policeman. How far can an elephant and a monkey go, said the other one. Suddenly, there was a big roar. So that's where they are, said the policeman. Let's go. All right, you little monkey. Where did you get that elephant? You two are under arrest. George was scared. A crowd was gathering in front of the warehouse. That's him, a driver shouted. He nearly caused an accident, said another. Incredible. A monkey riding an elephant down Main Street, said a lady. Just then, the circus people came running in. That's our lost elephant, said the owner. Wait, officer. If it wasn't for George, we might never have found him. Well, said the policeman, in that case, I guess we'll let you go. But George, said the owner, the next time you find an elephant, tell us first. How would you like to ride the elephant back to the circus? There you are, George, said the man with the yellow hat. I've been waiting for you. Don't you want your ice cream? <laughs>